Good afternoon, and thank you for meshing with us as we analyze the best jerseys in NBA history. NBA jerseys are made from blended materials, including polyester and recycled water bottles. So, while this episode might include some meltdowns and a trash host, NBA jerseys are literally made from melted down trash, so it seems appropriate. Time to just do it on this episode of Brain Drain. Why do they call it a jersey? What's a jersey? The now ubiquitous sporting necessity is more of a where than a what. The term comes from the island of Jersey, which is the largest of the Channel Islands between England and France. The natives from Jersey made tightly woven sweaters that were both useful and fashionable. In the late 19th century, American footballers needed something warm and insular to cover themselves during the grueling game. These sweaters of Jersey seemed to fit the bill and made their way stateside. And yes, they even ended up in New Jersey. Why do they put numbers on jerseys? Major League Baseball was the first to normalize numbers on uniforms. And it was pretty simple. Your number was where you batted in the batting order. Babe Ruth was number three, so he wore number three. Lou Gehrig batted fourth and therefore wore number four. After the 1930s, uniform numbers got wildly complicated depending on the sport. Football numbers are usually in a range within the position group you play in. Hockey numbers outside of one or 30-ish, which are typically reserved for goaltenders, are all over the place. But this is a basketball episode, so let's not get out of hand. Speaking of hand, basketball leagues in the United States almost exclusively use single and double digits from one to five for numbers. For example, one through five, 10 through 15, 20 through 25, etc. This is true for all age groups and is solidified by the NCAA, which requires that only these numbers be used. The NCAA does this to help the nonverbal communication between referees who use their hands to fingers to relay a player's number to the scoring table. It's hard for the refs to show more numbers than they have fingers. And NBA players typically try to keep the number they grew up playing. So that's why you don't see a lot of number 26s or number 37s or 48s. Mostly international players who grew up without that requirement were unusually high numbers. There's only been one attempt at wearing number 69 and that was by Dennis Rodman. He was denied and wound up wearing number 70. Enough numbers. Here are the top 10 NBA jerseys in NBA history. We're trying to be inclusively exclusive by ranking and giving props to the NBA franchises with the best jersey history and portfolio. Don't get mad if your favorite alternates and city editions didn't make the cut. Just vent about it in the comments section. Here we go. Number 10, the Utah Jazz. Ever since they moved from New Orleans, the Utah Jazz have trumpeted some exotic and melodic unis. The early 80s green were money. The purple beauties from 1984 to 1996 might just be their peak, but the classic mountain look of the 1996 to 2004 era is worth scaling the summit. Today, they still impress with the occasional donning of those national park popping red rock pullovers. Number nine, the Phoenix Suns. The purple and orange Sedona sunrises and sunsets are honored in this underrated color combination. The late 60s jerseys are classic and clean, featuring all pointed caps with a striped belt. The jerseys from 1992 to 2000 have one of the greatest logos in NBA history. Yes, the Suns made the finals in 1993 with Charles Barkley sporting these and had a great run with Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire wearing something much worse, but the highlight of their franchise is still probably their color combo and their graphics team. Number eight, the Charlotte Hornets. We know, we know the dark days of the Bobcats uniforms cannot be ignored, but the Queen City's prior pinstripe style prevails and gets the Hornets buzzing into the top 10. Since they came out of their hive during 1988 NBA expansion, Charlotte has had a great look with slight variants evolving through the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. 2020 marked a modern interpretation of their roots with one notable difference. Their owner's jumping silhouette is now featured in the top patch corner. Number seven, the Denver Nuggets. The Mile High City is home to a mountain range and a mascot of the same name, Rocky. And that mountain lion concurs that the Rainbow Skyline Nuggets jerseys worn from 1985 to 1993 were their best look. Or maybe it was the dark blue and gold Dikembe Mutombo era jerseys that are as chill as a Coors Light. Or perhaps the satin tactile and soft baby blues that Carmelo Anthony and Chauncey Billups slipped into in 2008. The official colors of the Nuggets are Midnight Blue, Sunshine Yellow, Flat Irons Red, and Skyline Blue. No matter their history, we're excited for their future in Denver's. I'm so sorry. Number six, the Milwaukee Bucks. A lot of the early Bucks jerseys look like they were designed by Father Christmas. The red and green come up as big as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's skyhook. 
Milwaukee moved away from red and entered a purple and green palette in the 1990s and into the 2000s, with red trim coming back every so often. Their boldest, best, and buxiest choice was the 1995 antler jersey era. Today, they lean into the Cream City moniker as an homage to the cream-colored bricks that the city is known for. But we say, bring back the cartoon buck. Honorable mention to the cities that had teams but wrongly lost them and their killer jerseys. Special shout outs to the Seattle Supersonics, Buffalo Braves, Vancouver Grizzlies, and the Fort Wayne Pistons. Look at those bad boys. RIP. Number five, the Miami Heat. South Beach's virtue has been their vice. The black 2018 Miami Vice jerseys are so clean and pure. The Heat's classic red, black with orange trim look was always perfectly suited for the fiery way Pat Riley and now Eric Spolster's teams play. The late 80s through the early 2000s had a consistent look. On the shorts, a blazing ball going through a hoop on the right leg, while Miami is written in all caps on the left leg. A flickering flame skirts off the top of the tee at the end of the word heat on the sleeveless jersey. In the past decade, the designers have gone to emphasize the city Miami over the word heat, but the fire is anything but MIA. Number four, the Chicago Bulls. Dub Bulls haven't changed their look since 1985, and that's a great choice. Michael Jordan had just asked the league to allow for longer shorts, and his airness was about to enter his prime, which wasn't short-lived. The Bulls' red and black aesthetic of the 80s and 90s is a classic. The jersey numbers are symmetrically positioned under the slightly arched Bulls lettering. The diamond icon that surrounds the Bull logo on the shorts should never change. It is rumored that the Windy City's basketball team secured its name after the son of the original owner said to his powerful pops, Dad, that's a bunch of bull. Number three, the Golden State Warriors. The Golden State Warriors franchise has played in the city, the town, and the bay. And also, Philadelphia? Yes, these Warriors have traveled far and wide, but have always been styling in mostly yellow and blue. From the 1966 The City vibe with Rick Barry, to the Chris Mullins run TMC Blue Crew in the 90s, to the Splash Brothers of today's game, the Warriors believe, and rightfully so, in their golden fleeces and championship flexes. Number two, Boston Celtics. May you never forget what is worth remembering, nor ever remember what is best forgotten. The Celtics have kept this Irish adage close to their hearts as they remember not to forget where they came from, as Boston's current jersey very closely resembles those of the 1950s. Slight changes include updating their font by welcoming sans serif block lettering in 1968 and adding a shamrock here and there over the years. The original Celtics Road Unis read Boston on the front from the late 1940s to the 1970s. That text across the chest was changed to Celtics in 1972 and wasn't altered until 2014 when it reverted back to Boston. The white and green colors are as classic as the Boston Garden Parquet floors, and the Celtics business card might as well be championship banners in the rafters. Speaking of business cards, Vistaprint is their jersey sponsor. And number one, the Los Angeles Lakers. La La Land Showtime movers and shakers have the most memorable look in the association. But before it was sunshine, champagne, and Shaq dancing with Mark Madsen, there were the Minneapolis Lakers, whose road uniforms were powder blue with gold trim. MPLS adorned road uniforms, and when those Minnesotans hit the road and came to Los Angeles, these Land of 10,000 Lakers kept their blue and white colors from 1960 to 1967, only changing to purple and gold upon their move to the Forum. In 1978, the likes of Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar were part of a tremendous jersey transition from white numbers to purple numbers with white drop shadows. This was kept until 1999, when a young Shaq and Kobe were about to three-peat titles in 2000, 2001, and 2002. The Lakers usually wear white on Sundays and for holiday games, which is nice, but Jack Nicholson knows that all that glitters is purple and gold. So what's your favorite jersey? What's your favorite jersey era? Does anyone actually look good in orange? Does anything really rhyme with orange? Are we all just recycled water bottles? Let us know. Thanks for watching Brain Drain. I'm Tom Polos. And don't forget to subscribe. It's a no-brainer.